Welcome everybody. Uh, for this video I'll be discussing and explaining uh, the preparation of ethers. Just a few words before I continue with this video. I want to talk a little bit about alcohols. As you guys may tell if you go onto my channel and uh, check the playlist, uh, playlist section um, you'll, you'll find a section on uh, deals in alder, um, aromatic ring and alcohols. And in regards to the alcohol um, I've covered a lot of the material you guys need to know in order to have a good understanding, a good and sound understanding of alcohols. So uh, there are a few things, actually one thing that I left out that I can think of right now and that is alcohol protection. Um, I didn't make a video on that topic because I didn't think it was that significant but eventually, hopefully in the near future, um, I'll be making a video on that. Uh, I thought it was uh, necessary for me to move on to a new functional group and that is exactly what I'm doing. So the new functional group we'll be looking at uh, are ethers and um, and for the first video again I'll be discussing and explaining the preparation of ethers. So let's get to it right away. Okay. So there are two main ways um, that you can prepare ethers. The first one is called alkoxy mercuration. Okay, alkoxy mercuration. There you go. The second one, the second way you could pre uh, prepare an ether, is by the the Williamson Williamson ether um, synthesis. Okay, so uh, those are the two main ways you can prepare ethers. Um, there are other ways you can uh, make ethers, but these are the two main ways I'll be focusing on. Okay, so again, for those of you who need a little refresher of what an ether is, an ether is basically an oxygen, right? You have two lone pairs, and uh, an oxygen between two carbon groups. So I put R here, referring to a generic form. Okay, so it can be any type of carbon group. Okay, so you can have alkyl groups. Um, an aromatic ring, you can have an aromatic ring, um, any type of substituted alkyl group like I said earlier. Uh, you can have primary, secondary, tertiary groups located at these positions. So any type of carbon group that where an oxygen is between those two carbon groups, okay? So that is what an ether is, okay? So this is an ether, okay? So let's, uh, the way I've structured this, uh, these videos on the preparation of ethers is basically for the first part I'll be explaining alkoxy mercuration and in the second part I'll be discussing the Williamson ether synthesis, okay? So let's get to it right away with the first one, alkoxy mercuration. So the alkoxy mercuration uh, reaction begins with an alkene, okay? So if this is your alkene and uh, uh, you react it with, okay, let's put this right here actually. So, again, the first, uh, your starting material is an alkene. You react it with mercury acetate, right? And any type of alcohol. So again, when I say any type of alcohol, it could be a primary, secondary, or tertiary alcohol. So again, this R is referring to any type of carbon group, okay? Any type of chain, any type of alkyl group, okay? And the final reagent you use in this reaction is sodium borohydride, okay? So to a lot of you guys, you be like, wait, this is very familiar, and it is, okay? This is almost the exact same thing, excuse me, as um, oxymercuration and demercuration. The reaction you guys should know from first semester organic chemistry, okay? The only difference between the two is that in alkoxymercuration, you use an alcohol instead of water, okay? So that's the main difference between the two. And in regards to the reaction mechanism, it follows the basic same steps okay so the result of this uh, reaction you'll still form the Markovnikov product 
So instead of forming a Markovnikov product, which is an alcohol, you'll form, in Marko you'll form a Markovnikov product, which is an ether. Okay. So you have your ether here. What is R group right there? Okay. So there's your ether. So that's all it is to it. Okay. So as you guys may tell, you lose a double bond if you guys just try to figure out how this works. You lose the double bond. And the oxygen forms a bond between this carbon and itself, and that's all it is. The reaction. Okay. So let me go in more detail as far as how the bonding take takes place, and we can understand that when we look at the reaction mechanism. So I'm going to erase this, uh, and so I can have more space to go through the reaction mechanism. So I hope you guys copied it down. Okay. So again, we'll focus with the same example I just presented you, and that is um, this alkene. Okay. And again, you have this alkene, and it's going to react with. It's going to do the same style of reaction mechanism as before when you looked at oxymercuration, demercuration. Okay. First step. You form a bond between this carbon and the mercury, and you form a bond using the lone pairs of the mercury between the mercury and this carbon over here. So let's do that right quick. So you form a bond there, and a bond there. So now you kick off one of the acetates, and so you form a cyclic intermediate. So the result of okay the result of this step okay the result of the step is this cyclic intermediate now this mercury has a positive charge on it sorry about the blurriness that should go away um, pretty soon and you have this one of the acetates right there okay so that's the first step you know also you form acetate ion with a negative charge okay now what happens is that you're going to break this cyclic intermediate and the way you break it is by having the alcohol come into uh, the picture so you have your alcohol right here again I was using a generic form of an alcohol the lone pairs of this oxygen is what's going to form the bond between the oxygen and this carbon over here. Okay, so let's draw that. We have the arrow right there. Now what happens is that you kick off this pair of electrons right here onto the mercury. Okay, well, let's just as such. Okay, so that's the second step, and the product of this step the product of this step is this you have your mercury put your one of your acetates on it and now you have your soon to be um, ether okay and this oxygen now has a positive charge okay a formal positive charge of plus one okay so if you think back to your to the previous step um, this acetate ion you had formed from the first step will come into play and that is what makes a bond between itself and this hydrogen over here okay and you kick off this pair of electrons right here to the oxygen okay pretty straightforward So the next step, so you form basically your HGOAC still, and now you have your ether. Okay, the final step again, pretty pretty standard of both this reaction uh, and the oxymercuration demercuration is the sodium borohydride step. 
for this step we don't show any arrows any electron pushing arrows or anything like that we just simply write sodium borohydride right and uh, we just draw the product and the product is your Markovnikov product which is the ether in the more substituted position right here so there it is let's go through the steps one more time so you guys have it down for sure again first thing is that you form a bond using the pi electrons here between this carbon and the mercury while using the lone pairs of the mercury to form a bond between itself and this carbon over here you also kick off one of the acetates okay so that is one of the byproducts of this step you form over here okay so as a result of this first step you form this cyclic intermediate now the mercury has a positive charge due to an extra bond forming between itself and this carbon so now the alcohol comes into play it makes a bond between the oxygen and this carbon over here okay you kick off this pair of electrons onto the mercury you form this as a product of this step over here so now your soon to be ether has a positive charge due to having three bonds on the oxygen and um, you still have this mercury and this acetate over here now what happens to form your ether is that the acetate ion you form from the first step over here uh, makes a bond with this hydrogen a pair of electrons gets kicked off to this oxygen and now your oxygen has no charge it's stable it's a neutral oxygen and you still have your mercury and the acetate attached to it now what happens in the final step all you do is use sodium borohydride you don't show any arrows all we assume is that basically this whole piece right here gets removed and you form your ether in the uh, Markovnikov fashion okay your ether is, uh, is on the carbon that's most substituted okay so um, again this alkoxy mercuration is a pretty uh, pretty standard and easy way to form ether um, stay tuned to uh, next part where I'll be explaining and discussing uh, the Williamson ether synthesis. Thank you for watching the first part of the two-part series